Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass this morning, for the needs of Holy Mother Church and the suffering world, for Father Boniface de Souza, Carmelite, and Dr. Sarah Shanahan on their birthdays, for David Witherington and those recommended to our prayers, for the repose of the soul of Sister Carol of Christ, for the souls in purgatory, and for the conversion of sinners and the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And it's the memorial of St. Boniface. This truly is a martyr who shed his blood for the name of Christ, who did not fear the threats of judges, but attained the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment of silence, we ask the Lord to prepare us by forgiving us our sins and freeing us from all anxiety. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the martyr St. Boniface be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed in his blood, and confidently profess it by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the book of Tobit. I, Tobit, walked in the ways of truth and righteousness all the days of my life, and I performed many acts of charity to my brethren and countrymen who went with me into the land of the Assyrians to Nineveh. When I arrived home and my wife Anna and my son Tobias were restored to me, at the Feast of Pentecost, which is the sacred festival of the seven weeks, a good dinner was prepared for me, and I sat down to eat. Upon seeing the abundance of food, I said to my son, Go and bring whatever poor men of our brethren you may find among the exiles in Nineveh, who is mindful of the Lord, and he shall eat together with me. I will wait for you until you come back. So Tobias went out to look for some poor person of our people. When he came back, he said, Father, and I replied, Here I am, my child. Then he went on to say, Look, Father, one of our people has been murdered and thrown into the marketplace, and now he lies there strangled. So before I tasted anything, I sprang up and removed the body to a place of shelter until sunset when I might bury it. And when I returned, I washed myself and ate my food in sorrow. Then I remembered the prophecy of Amos, how he said against Bethel, your feasts shall be turned into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I wept. When the sun had set, I went and dug a grave and buried the body. And my neighbors laughed at me and said, He is still not afraid. He has already been hunted down and be put to death for doing this. And he ran away. 
Yet here he is, burying the dead again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who takes great delight in his commandments. His descendants shall be powerful on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Riches and wealth are in his house. His justice stands firm forever. A light rises in the darkness for the upright. He is generous, merciful, and just. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affair with, with justice. He will never be moved. Forever shall the just be remembered. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and washed away our sins in your blood. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus began to speak to the chief priests and the scribes and the elders in parables. A man planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, and dug a pit for the winepress, and built a tower, and leased it to tenants, and went into another country. And when the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him back empty-handed. Again he sent to them another servant. They wounded him in the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed. And so with many others, some they beat and some they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son, Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. They took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they tried to arrest him but feared the multitude for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. And so they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is uh, one of the very famous parables, a prophetic parable <coughs> that Jesus told in dealing with the chief priests and scribes and elders of the people. 
And therefore it is important for us today, and the church has drawn attention to this, that this is not a parable against the Jewish people as a whole. It's not an anti-Semitic parable, but it's against the religious leaders of the Jews. And indeed, they themselves recognize this. They realize the parable was aimed at them. That they were like the wicked tenants, violent tenants, who had killed the beloved son of the owner. The beloved son, of course, evokes for us the son of God, Jesus himself. And they, the scribes and Pharisees and leaders, what did they do when they realized that this parable was aimed at themselves? Did they learn from the parable? Did they change their mind about Jesus? They were afraid of the Jewish people, the crowds. And they left him alone, not because they were innocent or nonviolent, but because they were afraid of the crowd. And so Jesus is saying the Vineyard will be taken from them. The vineyard, of course, in the stories of the Old Testament, is Israel. And the owner of the vineyard is God. And he, those he sent in the story, the owner sending one after another, were the prophets, whose fate was generally to be murdered, certainly to be despised and ignored. And the only son, the beloved one, is Jesus himself. And so the vineyard is being given to someone else, will be given to the others. Not to the Romans, not to generations of Christians later, but to the, anyone who is a disciple of Jesus. And so we see that the Pharisees, the chief priests, scribes, and elders did not respond positively to this warning in the story. And we who hear it today, the question we have to ask, is what kind of tenants are we? We have been given so much by the Father. What kind of return are we making? Are we able to offer any fruits of our life to him when he comes to claim what is rightfully is. So we pray for sensitivity, sensitivity to this parable that challenges us to be faithful, to be ready to offer the fruits of our life to God. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of their hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace, May we be set on fire with the flame of your love, through which St. Boniface overcame every bodily torment, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Boniface, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble, bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> and so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and to bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe 
from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which rendered your blessed martyr Boniface faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go and serve the Lord with our lives. Praise Saying to Michael, the archangel, Defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, as thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls, Amen.